Matcha, coffee, and herba mate are popular drinks enjoyed around the world, each with its unique flavor, cultural significance, and potential health benefits. In this video, I wanted to keep it short and simple. Let's go over the key differences of each, highlight their significance, and what makes each unique. Starting with the first, matcha. Now matcha is more potent than steeped green tea because you consume the whole leaves when you drink it and it's simple to make. Matcha has caffeine like coffee and herba mate so it can boost mood, enhance focus, and improve reaction time. But matcha also has something very unique about it. It contains L-theanine which provides protection against a caffeine crash. You can learn all about L-theanine in this video here which I highly encourage you to watch after this one. So this makes it for a great choice for any Anyone who is sensitive to caffeine. At the same time, L-theanine promotes relaxation, mental focus, can improve cognitive function, and can potentially be neuroprotective all at the same time. And a lot of its potential health benefits can be attributed back to its EGCG content, which is a catechin with powerful antioxidant capabilities. Interesting to note is that matcha has a long history of ceremonial use in Japanese tea ceremonies where you found it prepared with meticulous attention to detail, almost as if it was art. And in terms of the highest quality of matcha, look for ceremonial grade made from shade grown and stone ground tea leaves. It's really important you find a reputable source of matcha because some studies have raised concerns about potential heavy metal contamination in matcha due to environmental factors. So definitely choose products from trusted sources. I'll leave below a few I found to be of high quality which you can pick up down below as my affiliate. And in terms of shade grown, before the matcha is even harvested, it needs to be shaded. When the tea plant is exposed to sunlight, it begins to convert the theanine into bitter catechins. But in order to get a sweeter, less bitter tea, the farmer sometimes cuts the tea plant off from sunlight so that the plant maintains more of its sweet theanine. And not to forget to mention the chlorophyll. The shade actually increases the amount of chlorophyll content in the leaves making the tea leaves a bright green. And the higher the quality of ma the matcha is, the more vibrant green it will be. That's why the organic ceremonial grade matcha will always be a beautiful deep emerald green. Next up, we have coffee. Coffee is one of the world's most traded commodities and it supports millions of, of farmers and workers across coffee producing regions around the world. Each region produces its own taste. For example, take a look at the coffee built. Coffee from Ethiopia will be bright and fruity, but coffee from Mexico will be sweet and nutty. This is what makes it fun to experiment with, and it takes a true coffee connoisseur to taste the cup and know exactly where it's from. It's also the most widely consumed drink for its stimulating effects, giving you a quick boost of energy and alertness. But beyond just being rich in caffeine, Coffee actually contains antioxidants such as chlorogenic acid, and this is where it shines. Chlorogenic acid has been seen to protect against three main things. One, oxidative stress, two, inflammation, and three, reducing the risk of chronic diseases. And in terms of the best source of coffee, you'll find a freshly ground coffee beans that are produced in high quality and ethically sourced regions in the world to be of the highest quality. If you can, Opt for organic varieties so that you can minimize exposure to pesticides and other contaminants. What makes coffee more unique than let's say matcha is the fact that there are lots of different brewing methods. You have pour over, french press, espresso, drip coffee, and so many other methods which all affect both the flavor and the strength of the coffee. And although you have over 120 species of caffea plants, with caffea arabica and caffea canifora, otherwise known as robusta, being the two most popular commercially, arabica contributes to 70% of the world's coffee consumption. Robusta has a lower lipid content, which is why it tastes a little bit more bitter and is cheaper to, to produce versus arabica. And in terms of getting the most polyphenolic compounds, Typically, the lighter and medium roasts will contain the highest amounts. Approximately 355 milligrams of polyphenols per 180 milliliters serving on average, which is going to be nearly double that of green tea. Comment down below your favorite type of coffee and your favorite brewing method. And lastly, we have yerba mate, one of my favorite drinks. It's a traditional drink in Latin and South American countries. Yerba mate actually comes from two languages, Spanish and Quechua, and literally means herbs from the calabash because mate leaves were brewed in special vessels made of dried calabash fruit. And the first to use yerba mate in its traditional habitat 
was the Guarani Indians. But then in the 16th century, the Jesuits came to the area and started to professionally cultivate and trade the leaves of the Paraguayan holly and made it known as Jesuit tea. And it's made by steeping and drying these leaves from the yerba mate plant in hot water, but can also be served cold or hot. I actually like it cold, and in my opinion, it's an acquired taste. It has extremely high levels of tannins, which give it a distinctly bitter flavor, almost woodier than matcha, for example, because the veins and stems are not always removed from the leaves. Matcha, in my opinion, is way more earthy. This is why you'll most often find yerba mate in pre-made drinks with sugar and, and other flavors added to it, because like I said, it's an acquired taste and is more robust. So if it's your first time drinking it, it's best to start with Argentine yerba mate because I would say that the majority of yerbas from Argentina are on the lighter and sweeter side compared to other regional varieties that may be smoked and too strong for the beginner. Oh, and, and another thing, I recommend staying away from the smoked versions and stick with non-smoked yerba mate. And in terms of the caffeine content, it does contain it, but it's in lower concentrations than coffee, and you'll actually get a mild stimulant effect that enhances alertness and mental focus, but with a lot less jitters versus your coffee. But I think where it shines is the fact that it contains theobromine and theophylline, which are methylxanthine compounds that contribute to all the potential health benefits we hear about mate, like blood sugar control, weight management, and reduced inflammation. I made a vi detailed video on yerba mate that goes into a lot more depth, which I highly encourage you to watch after this one. And the ideal harvesting time is during the warmer months, typically from October to April. And after harvest, the leaves are spread out for the sun to dry, which allows moisture to evaporate. It's important to get the proper drying as well to prevent growth and molds and maintain the quality of the yerba mate, which actually seems to be a very big issue in some regions.